There are over 11,000 themes in the WordPress themes repository and countless other themes you can buy through third-party premium marketplaces. In this tutorial, I'm gonna help you get a few ideas you can think of when you're picking a WordPress theme to help you narrow in on the right choice. You don't wanna be changing your theme all that often or all that much, whether it's a new site or a site you're revamping. So it's really important you get this decision right from the get-go. I think the best first place to start is kind of just establishing your requirements for your theme so that you can uh, narrow in on a few different options and make sure they check all the boxes. So the first thing I like to look at is just key functionality and is your theme compatible? So for your WordPress membership site, make sure your theme is compatible with the WordPress membership plugin you've chosen. I'm from Paid Memberships Pro, so I can say most themes are compatible. Some look better than others, for sure. Some themes are more designed for like a front-end user login experience for a site that's being used by your users and navigated by users, rather than just kind of what you would call a brochureware site. So really think about what are your requirements and does your theme support them? Does your theme have support for a forum software if you're gonna be using one, other community tools? Does it have support for a listings type system if you're gonna be using that, or custom post types if you're doing you know, video or if you're doing podcasting? So think of your key requirements and just make sure the theme you're choosing will fit all of those needs. The next area to think about is page builder compatibility. If you have experience using a page builder like Beaver Builder or Divi or Elementor, make sure that the theme you're choosing is compatible and tightly compatible with that builder experience. On the flip side, you might not be using a third-party page builder and just choose to use the WordPress block editing experience, the WordPress block editor, or Gutenberg, any of those things. So make sure your theme supports the block editor and it's designed to use it. That's kind of my preference not to use a third-party page builder. I like using the native WordPress block editor and I like a theme that uh, is built to use it. The next point I wanna make is just thinking about your own design skills, uh, what you possess inside yourself to design your theme. Some themes are very bare bones and they're gonna leave a lot up to you to do the designing, to do the layouts, other themes have huge template libraries and starter packs and starter sites that really let you import something beautiful and you're going to be doing some color adjustments, some image adjustments, and maybe, of course, some text updates as well. So uh, think about your design skills. Think about how much fine grain control you want over editing areas of your site. If you're not in need of all that fanciness, don't go for a theme that has a lot of demo content and preloaded and, and extra features if you think you're really gonna be uh, manipulating a lot of it yourself. Another area to think about when you're deciding which WordPress theme to use is kind of modern standards and best practices for WordPress site development. One area of that is definitely mobile responsiveness. It feels silly to even be talking about that now in 2023, but depending on your website, you might have a lot of mobile traffic. So make sure you like the way that the theme you're selecting looks both on a desktop view as well as a tablet or a mobile view. You'll also wanna confirm that the theme itself has a decent page speed. Once you add membership and e-commerce components, those things become a lot more draining on your site. So if the site itself without any of those features is already running slow, you might wanna pick a different theme. Um, themes can be very lightweight and not load a lot of libraries, a lot of external resources. On the flip side, they can be quite heavy. Test the theme itself, uh, the demo site that the theme author provides, and just see where that baseline is hitting. This next one might be hard for you to judge, but it's uh, related to technical SEO. So the page structure for the site, this is also important for accessibility. Is the page structured well for a non-human reader as well as a human reader using assistive technology? There's some basic structure of a site that you could run through a, a tester tool an accessibility checker tool, and even some basic technical SEO audit tools to help you determine if the site is well-structured. Final area I'd look for is a theme that's well-supported and well-coded. So you can look to reviews of the theme to see if people are having technical issues and how quickly the theme author is responding. You can also look at the community around the theme. Some themes have developed huge user bases, huge user communities of people helping one another, and showing each other the ways to fix and do things and in different ways. So how is the theme support? How is the community around the theme 
if those are things that are valuable to you. I wanna close out this video with a quick overview of three different types of themes we're seeing now in WordPress sites. Now in 2023, this is recorded. Up until this, like a couple years ago, basically the only type of theme we had was something we called a classic theme. Uh, that was a theme that was um, native to WordPress, didn't really build any new builder functionality into it, not designed to work with the WordPress block editor, which is an emerging page builder within WordPress itself. Some classic themes would use something called the WordPress customizer, which was an interface in WordPress to change settings of the theme. Like you could use it to assign widgets to widget areas. You could also use it to change theme colors or fonts and things like that. Uh, classic themes might also have their own complete kind of theme editing, theme customization experience. The next type of theme is a block theme. So this is a theme that's tightly integrated with the WordPress block editor with the full site editing experience. You won't get the WordPress customizer in this level of theme, but you do unlock a lot of different tools for the block editor for Gutenberg and how you edit your pages in your WordPress site. It's gonna give you controls like adding full width, edge to edge, you know, blocks and groups within page content adjusting margins on individual elements, padding, spacing, border, border radius. Uh, the list just keeps expanding of what the block editor is enabling for WordPress sites. And especially with block themes where you can actually within WordPress, within a user interface that's kind of user friendly, uh, you can change the layout and structure of pages on your site, like the layout of the single blog page and reorder things and add new elements. And then the third type of theme is what I call a hybrid theme. And this kind of marries the two options. It's really a classic theme under the hood, but it has enabled some of these block editor features and expanded a little bit beyond just classic theme features. So Member Lite, which is the theme we develop for membership sites is a hybrid theme. You can still use the customizer to adjust settings in member light but within the page and post editing experience you have a lot of those uh, wordpress block editor and gutenberg functionalities i talked about like changing the font family on a specific section of text adjusting font size line height border border radius shadow all of these things so that's a hybrid theme um, kind of where i'm sitting right now is that's my favorite type of theme i think it's the most stable and i think those are the longest standing themes that aren't too new to market that have been tried and true i wish i could make theme selection easier for you it is complex there are so many options out there and a lot of people think we're getting to a place where all themes are going to start looking the same what what can you do i would say find a website you like see if you can determine what wordpress theme it's using and always test drive things, either a local environment or some development or staging site, and just play with it. Because you're going to be using that theme editing experience a fair bit, especially if you're uh, using the block editor. Get familiar with that. Get familiar with whatever page builder is associated with your theme um, that makes things easier for you. I'm Kim Coleman. I hope that was a helpful tutorial on some of the things I look at when I'm choosing a WordPress theme. Some of the basics, just looking at what you're trying to build and making sure that the theme's gonna support you now and as you grow down the road.